Greetings, dear ones. I'm Cryon of Magnetic Service. We're in the Australian city called Adelaide. For those listening and not here, and what you might hear in the background is the wind, for there's weather here. It's more than a man in a chair, dear ones. And for those who have not experienced this live, we encourage you to open up your belief and ask yourself, is there more? No matter what you've been told, I'll tell you this, that if you are one of those courageous humans who have not experienced this before, who then say, I'm ready to see if there is truth here, if there's an energy that I can recognize here, I'm ready for that. If you're one of those dear ones, then I'll tell you, it's going to happen for you. And for those who are not, I will say this and ask this. Why are you afraid of being loved? Do you believe in the Creator? And you'll say, well, yes, I do. Do you believe in God? Well, yes, I do. Then why do you close it off? Why have you built the box that you have that says, this is as far as I'm going to go. And if, there, if there's more out there, even if it's love, I don't think so, not today. Are you afraid of being loved too much? Because that's what all of this is about. Blessed is the human being who understands that they are temporary and that there is a consciousness that is multidimensional that goes way beyond your name. That when you take your last breath, whenever that would be, the vessel stays, but you continue. And that continuation is because you are eternal. Science is starting to ask the question, what happens when you die? But they're not asking the question, how did you get here? For well, that soul comes in, dear ones, in this beautiful way, into a new temporary vessel with a new name. But it carries history. It carries profundity. That soul of yours, whatever the name is on the human, has always been and always will be. There is no age to it because it always was and always will be. That's how big you are. Bigger than you are ever told and more magnificent than anyone has ever told you. You are part of the creative source, dear ones. You didn't arrive dirty. You arrived magnificent and ready to go. And perhaps that's new to you, and perhaps you had to hear it first, but doesn't it ring true? Why would a creator bring you here, give you free choice, judge you immediately, and send you to places that even a parent would not do to their child, no matter how they behaved. You're magnificent. I want you to feel the love because I want to tell you a little bit about change. So my partner has just given you a scenario to look at that says intrinsically in all human consciousness there is a hero's story. That intrinsically in every human consciousness there is the willingness to come through winning. That victimization is not part of that. Never was. And that all that you might feel if you have that idea that you're a victim has been given to you by humans, not God, by humans. Perhaps 
in an inappropriate way to tear you down so you'll do things for them. But whatever it is, dear ones, this is an age where awareness is starting to get through that. Have you ever, you ever then sat alone and said, I know things. I've been here before. Have you ever sat alone and thinking, I am light. And any darkness that might be part of me has been trained in me. But that's not how he started. And that's not how I'll leave. And if you've said that to yourself, you are so right on. Good on you. Because that is the core truth. That is real. Change is happening on this planet. Let me give you a few things to look at just in these few moments. One of the attributes, number one, what didn't happen? How many times have you looked at the change of humanity past 2012 and realized what did not happen that was supposed to? And supposed to from prophecies. Prophecies both biblical and esoteric. You weren't going to make it. You weren't going to make it past 2000 or 2012. And here you are in 2018. What didn't happen is significant, dear ones. Because it represents profound change of consciousness. If things had been as they were prophesied to be, they would have respected that adage that says history repeats itself and that human consciousness doesn't change. But history didn't repeat itself and human consciousness has changed. This curtain that you've gone through, dear ones, is almost like you have passed into another kind of dimensionality where human beings are starting to go from 4D to beyond it. And in that, there are perceptions that you've not had before, awarenesses that you have not had before, and the entire planet is seeing it in their own way, individually, family by family. How do you feel about that? Do you participate in it? Do you understand? Are you seeing anything that's even within yourselves that might show that? Number two, human nature is changing. My partner showed this on the screen to you. Human beings are wanting different kinds of things on this planet. Not the old energy things. And you're seeing this revealed in so many of the movements today. They're starting to solve the oldest, darkest problems that you've ever had. You're starting to see things come out of the closet that you wish you'd never seen but have always been there. Dear ones, this is human nature. The revelation of darkness that you were afraid of before. Here's an axiom that perhaps your parents gave to you, that you can never conquer big money on this planet. And big money controls everything. Therefore, you won't get ahead. Therefore, this and that will not be revealed. Therefore, therefore. And now you're starting to understand that that is not so. And how could this be? What was the trigger, dear ones, to get beyond that axiom? And the answer is a new consciousness that doesn't fear it. A new consciousness that looks at it and says, together we have the power to solve this in revelation. If we will reveal the darkness, it has to answer to itself, and it has, and it is, and it will. That is a new human consciousness. That is just beginning. I've told you that there will be two steps forward and one step back. And what this means, dear ones, is the darkness will fight you 
all the way. I'll get there. That's one of the attributes of change. That's already happening. Number three. You're going to start to see huge institutions start to have to change. And I'm talking about them all. I'm talking about your government worldwide. It can no longer sustain itself without transparency and compassion. It cannot. And the humans around the electoral process itself will demand it. New candidates will come forward who will seem timid and compassionate, and the public will elect them because they are not then critical of the other one. There's not the hate of the other one. Right now in my partner's country, it is starting to fall apart because of the compassion that is lost there, the hate that is starting to increase there. And when it breaks, dear ones, it will break fully into a compassionate plan. It has to. But what you're seeing in so many places is the breakdown of an older energy that you expected to work, and it doesn't. You're going to see it in financial institutions, in insurance. You're going to see it in pharmaceutical companies. You're going to see it everywhere there is what you would call enormous amounts of money being spent in perhaps inappropriate ways. That's the next thing. And when this starts to happen, dear ones, I want you to remember this particular channeling. You'll say, here it is. Big money is going to fail. And it's going to fail because of the compassion and the intelligence and the transparency of what new humans are asking for in mass, in mass. Old souls are the ones who are leading this, and they're not doing it by carrying placards or signs or marching. They're doing it by sitting and being compassionate on this planet with their families, those around them at work, at play, and you're starting to see it happen. Number four, how can I tell you this? The light is winning, but the dark is fighting. And when you will turn on to that which you will call your media, they will report the dark fighting. The report is the dark fighting. It's not the light winning at all. And so to you, there is only trouble and horror, sadness, heartbreak, death, dear ones, I'll tell you something. This light is causing those reactions. Have you noticed any unbalanced humans lately, anywhere, seemingly to snap and go to the dark side and only have one thing they want to do, and that's kill or destroy? That's new. Have you seen others that are invested in killing many and killing themselves at the same time? Dear ones, that is the dark fighting the light the best it can because that's what will make you afraid. Whatever makes you afraid will shut you down, old soul. Has anyone done any reporting on how many spontaneous remissions are happening on the planet? or how healing is doing, or how people are getting out of the hospital earlier, or finding solace in spirituality, or how meditation is working, or any of those things. And the answer, that is not on the news. And it's everywhere. It's everywhere. These are the things that eventually you'll start to see. The final one, number five, is you. You sit there today, and I have to ask, are you just listening? Maybe you're taking notes. Maybe this is an intellectual pursuit. Maybe you're writing a book. Why don't you put all that away? You can leave differently than you came, dear ones, because of what you do now. This is not an evangelistic thing. This is inviting you to look inside and look at your box. 
you'll live longer. Did you know that? If you receive more love, you'll live longer if you're healthier. You'll live longer if you're balanced. And I just gave you the secret. And it has to do with your higher self, which has always had its hand out from your birth to take that part of you which is sacred and walk with it and become a new person. Not a victim of the planet, not a complainer, but one who is peaceful and loving. And you don't have to try very hard because it starts to develop by itself. That's the God in you. That's change. That's change. Your children will see it. Your neighbors will see it. And some won't like it because it's just too radical. They'll say, what has happened? What drug are you on? <laughs> Not understanding that's what love does. This is the way of it. This is core truth that I give you today. These are things I invite you to test for yourself and see if I'm right. For now, so it is. So now that we're getting ready for Lee, I'd like to invite you to close your eyes and to take a deep breath. Take a deep breath through your nose and exhale out your mouth. And take another deep breath and feel the wind outside flowing through your body and blowing out anything that is inappropriate in your life. Take another deep breath. And as you exhale again, let that wind carry away anything that is inappropriate and no longer needed. And as you take your next breath, feel that wind bringing to you what you have been asking for. The wind has been travelling for a very long way to get to here, to get to this spot. So what you've been seeking and asking is sometimes as easy to obtain as riding on the wings of that wind. So take one last breath. And as we exhale... We want to send our love and gratitude and compassion on that wind, the wind that is flowing through here at such force. Allow that wind to carry our love, carry our gratitude and compassion to every single person that that wind is going to encounter. Greetings, dear ones. I'm Cryon. A magnetic service. This is the second channel in Adelaide. And we could refer to the first one. Talking about change. And if you want to look at perhaps one of the largest changes that start to occur to the old soul. It's going to be allowance. We've spoken of this before. And the allowance is this. The allowance of a belief system that would be flexible. Instead of a belief system which is linear and contains structure and compartments of truth that never change. You have one that is elastic. And what you say is, today I learned something very interesting. I'm not sure it's complete. But I know that it can be, and I expect to find out the rest of the story. But what if what I tell you next expands what you thought you knew? Way past that which you'd ever been told. 
And it has to do, dear ones, with the magnificence of your soul. It has to do with the compassion of God that is bigger than you could ever imagine. It has to do with love that is deeper and more pure than anything you could ever express as a human. And it comes from that which is the creator. Your soul. It is eternal. We said that. It should make sense to you that it is. And in that cognizing or realization that your soul is forever, you start to understand the grandness of your core. And so much of this is hidden from you. It's hidden from you so that that test of energy and free choice on this planet will not be interrupted. But the truth is this, dear ones, right after you take your last breath on this planet, you start to remember that soul of yours has that journey we've talked about before when you start to, to hear the music of light yet again. You're part of the universe. You're part of everything that is. You're not segmented. You're free in a way that you cannot even believe you're free. Your soul does not stay separate like your body stays separate because it is multidimensional and is one with everything. And yet it can be called out at any time as a soul with your name on it, a name we sing in light. This is magnificence of the human being. Far grander and greater than anything that you've ever been told is who you are. And in that, there are greater plans afoot than you've ever been told. And we have mentioned these things many times, but now we're in a group that is specific and we can mention them yet again. There is purpose here. There's purpose for life. There's purpose for death. There are systems of incarnation and expression here that are beautiful and go beyond the logic of the human being. Some of you have lost friends recently. So is my partner. Sometimes the loss would seem inappropriate in that it's too soon. Sometimes the loss of a friend, a sister or a brother, a child is shattering. I'm speaking to somebody here. Shattering. And there is that moment or two or three or four where you're mad at God. Where there's no reconciling what has happened. It's awful. It's like a horror in your life that remains, especially the loss of a child. And you would ask and ask and ask, dear God, why? What could be the possible reason why I would lose my mate at this point? Why I would lose my brother or my sister or my mom or my dad? Way before it's time, it would seem that these things would occur. And if you would ask those who are the shamans or the ones who are the spiritual guides, dear ones, they don't know. These things are part of a system. And I would like to tell you more about it so that you'd understand the magnificence of something that to you might be awful, might be blackness. What if I told you that there is indeed profound purpose in those that leave early. There's somebody who's lost a child here. What if I told you something? The child didn't leave. It just changed forms. The child has an agreement with you to stay with you till your last breath, enhance your life, be part of your life, 
walk with you, to remind you who you are, and love you until the end. And without that, you might not be alive today. That's profound. That's a system. That's love. That's a compassion that you may not have ever thought of, ever. Sometimes humans will leave early, way before their time, so that they can reincarnate and come back, grow up, and be part of your life later. Perhaps be, to be your parents later, to be your mentors later. Old souls help old souls. And it's a grand system that's starting to change. And it's starting to change because of this shift that you've been through. You might say those who are leaving early are laying a groundwork of old soul profundity so that when you come back, you will be in their arms. Their teaching will be already set, profound, books written, and you'll sit at their feet and remember and remember and remember. This shift of humanity is beginning to even change how souls come and go. And I tell you these things to soothe your heart and be still the, the horror that you might have in thinking about the losses that you've suffered recently. I'm talking to those who would listen to this later, and I'm saying to you, can you celebrate this? Can you feel those who seemingly have passed but are still with you? Right now in this room, dear ones, if souls are eternal, they're here. And that begs another question. How can they be here and also in reincarnate? Because you don't understand things which are multidimensional. You don't understand souls that can split and souls that can be in several places at the same time doing different things and helping others. This is advanced metaphysics way beyond anything that you have been told. And yet, it's real. I want you to feel the reality of this. I want you to understand in your hearts the beauty of it. And I want you to know that you, dear ones, are not victims in any way, shape, or form, that there is reasons for all of these things, and they will enhance you, your life, if you let it right now and beyond when you return. Right now. Relax, if you can, in the loving arms of God. When the Creator says to you, we know of your sorrow, and we wish you to turn it into peacefulness, that all is well, and the soul of the one who's departed is alive and well and smiling and knows you and is here. Knows you and is here. Knows you and is here. If you can do this, it is the evolvement of the human spirit into that which will be an evolution of knowledge, awareness, permission for you to change. The tolerance, dear ones, that you're going to need is great for systems you never thought of and some of you who will not believe it. So I ask for this tolerance and the expansion of thought and for those who don't believe what I'm telling you now, watch for certain things to happen in the next weeks that you can't explain because that is what we want to show you, the reality of something that you didn't expect, they're here. They know you. They love you. As you sit there in a multidimensional way, that soul is alive and it's well. And it's saying to you, please, just let me love you. Be peaceful for the rest of your life, for I'm here. It's the truth. And if you can allow it, you're going to walk out differently than you came. 
Advanced information, yes. Beyond what you thought, yes. And beautiful beyond belief. I've just given you something that can change your whole life if you'll allow it into that elastic bubble of belief. Go from this place in some ways rejuvenated, in some ways curious, but always in allowance of greater things to be. And so it is.